What's going on YouTube? It's Palfrey. And previously I talked about some of the Carib Sea Life Rock and I have it here in a five gallon bucket. We got it on an Eat Bird controller. I uh, want it to get up to uh, 80 degrees. It's currently at 77.2. I have three pieces in here. I have one piece in the sump. Um, I have a CHA 1.5 in there. Um, basically, basically I took water out of my storage container put water in here, started heating it up, added salt to it, and this is some well, well-established Ciparax. So, all I'm gonna do, is drop it all in there, and I don't mind that it's just sitting right there on top of the rock. I'm actually gonna put a lid on the bucket here to uh, minimize the evaporation, and that's how I plan on cycling uh, this rock right here. Now, if push come to shove, I had, I don't know if I can find it at the moment, but somewhere I have some ammonia, some of the Dr. Tim's ammonia, or I thought that I did, maybe I don't anymore, but anyway, this, this amount of Ciparax that I added to the bucket should be plenty. And uh, once I get the lid on there, then I'll just check it every couple days, make sure that it's just fine. And as far as the uh, salinity is concerned, I don't need it to match the uh, exact salinity of the tank, but I do want it to be 1.025 or 2.6-ish. So as soon as this heats up three more degrees, it gets to 80, where it's currently at 77.2. I'm gonna test the salinity, and if I have to add more salt to it, I will, but again, this is how I plan on cycling the rest of the Carib Sea Life Rock. About an hour or so later, here we are at 80 and 80. And I checked the salinity, we're at 1.025. So I'm gonna throw the lid back on the bucket here. And I'm sure that the lid probably actually helped as far as getting the temperature up where it needed to be. And as you can see, I have a cutout there for all the wires to come out. So I have the heater itself, the temp probe from the Inkbird, and then the CTA 1.5 power uh, coming out of the bucket. And as I said before, I'm gonna let this uh, Carib Sea Life Rock cycle in here for about one or two weeks, something like that. And with the Ciparax that's in there, it should help out tremendously. And then my plan is to pull out some of the uh, reef cleaner rock that I have in the tank and try to do an aquascape. And I'll probably use this big brute can to drain the tank down and maybe one of the 10 gallon brute cans if I need to add uh, or take out more water. Because what I would like to do is get a final scape with the shapes and then put some super glue on it with some accelerator. That way they're stable and they don't have, I don't have to worry about them moving. So yeah, we're gonna let this marinate for a little while and then uh, see what happens from there. 24 hours in the bucket at the moment. Heater set at 80, current temperature 79. Obviously, it's not doing anything because it had this lid on here and since it's dark in there, we won't get any algae or anything like that. And top of that rock is peeking out of the water just a little bit. But, you know, we'll give this, like I said, a couple weeks in there with that Ciparax there that's been in my tank for a year or more. And I put quite a bit of Ciparax in here, so I shouldn't have to add any ammonia. Again, Eheim heater hooked up to the Inkbird controller and a CJ 1.5 providing some circulation in the bucket. I decided the best avenue for rescaping the tank was to drain it down. Um, I drained the display down about halfway, uh, just for a couple different reasons. Number one, it'd just be easier for me to see what's going on. And then number two, um, I felt like it'd be easier for me to get the rock out since I have this, uh, I guess it's like a 30 gallon brute. Uh, it's pretty easy to just drain the water out. And uh, you know, I didn't have the water out long enough, so I didn't circulate the water or heat or anything. Uh, did a couple renditions of the scape on the left side. And then I just started filling the tank back up. So the water was probably only out of the tank for like 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, obviously it doesn't take very long to take rock out. 
it's trying to situate it. And that's why I wanted to pull uh, as much water out as I could because I wanted to see the rockscape uh, from above. You know, obviously I would, I would build the rockscape and then take a step back and see how I liked it there. And it took a little while to get uh, exactly what I wanted, but I think at the moment uh, I'm happy with what I've got here. And again, these are the Carib Sea uh, Life Rock shapes. Um, as the tank filled up even more, I just went ahead and turned the tunes uh, 6095s on um, just to get provide some circulation through the tank and, and I know that corals can survive way longer than uh, they were in the tank with no circulation but I figured I would just go ahead and turn them on and uh, that would give me another dimension of what the scape looks like with some movement in the tank and obviously you're gonna get some reflections and uh, um, some um, the, the, the way the light hits the water, it's gonna, with the movement in the water, it's gonna maybe change it a little bit visually, but not drastically. Not only do I love the color of the rock, but I just love the rock in general. I've, I've spoke about that a couple of different times. Taking a look at the Ciparax that I was cycling uh, the rock with, and I told you before, it was quite a bit, and I did not lie, I used quite a bit of Ciparax. And once I got done cycling the rock, I took this Ciparax back and put it into the tank. And uh, again, I have a large amount of Ciparax, which may be why my nitrates run zero all the time, but that's just how this tank's been. But I really like this media, and I'm gonna continue to use it. I just have it in a bag and sump, and whenever it comes time to cycle in rock or whatnot, it's always easy to just grab it out of the sump in a handful or whatever, and then do what I need with it, and then I'm gonna throw it back in the sump and make sure it's still seasoned media that I could use anytime down the road. So now that the tank is cleared up, this is the final outcome of the rock work. And again, I love the Carib Sea Life Rock because it gives you so many options, not only to scape with, but uh, to put corals on the rock. There is absolutely no doubt about that. And the crevices and caves that are in here are just magnificent I, I do love that rock work so uh, yeah you know I've, I appreciate you following along and that's how I cycled uh, this rock over here now granted one piece was in the sump for a couple weeks but yeah uh, pretty easy um, didn't take really no time at all so if that's what you're looking to do is change out some rock work I definitely suggest running some media in your current tank if you have one running and uh, give that a couple months or so to mature and then throw that in a bucket or a brute or a tote or something else with some pumps and a heater. Get that circulating and the rock will um, cycle, you know, pretty easily. And again, I had this in the dark, so um, no algae or anything's growing on it. And this rock's been in here for a little while now and I'm st I still don't have any algae or anything on the rock. So I'm completely, completely thrilled with how this came out. Uh, just real quick, this has nothing to do with that, but there is. A little mushroom. I wouldn't call it a uh, graveyard by any means, but there's a ton of mushroom back there. But oops, sorry about that. So yeah, if you are not, follow me on Instagram. Check out Instagram at Pelfrey's Reef. Check out the website at pelfrey.net. Appreciate you following along, and I'll catch you on the next one.